What's up, YouTubers? Um, this is another review of um, of a UFC fight, UFC 156 to be exact. Aldo versus Edgar should be an exciting night of fights. Man, it just seems like there's always something going on with the UFC. If it's not the pay-per-views, it's always something free on Fox or FX. Then you got Bellator and all the other stuff. So MMA just in general, um, if you'd like to stay on top of it, there's always something to watch. But let's go ahead and get started on these predictions. We have Joseph Benavidez versus Ian McCall. Um, you know, as far as this fight goes, um, both of these guys have, have, have lost to Demetrius Johnson. And I believe that this fight will definitely separate um, who's number one, number two contender, especially since Do uh, Dobson just lost. Um, you know, the, the flyweight division isn't really that deep, and there really hasn't been a, a, a rise of a star that would be in that top contention. So I really think a win, whoever wins this, will be uh, the number one contender for, the, for, for a title fight. And they'll just do, you know, uh, Demetrius Johnson versus whoever, too. Um, so, on these two individual fighters, I would say, you know, both of these guys are really good. They're fast-paced. It's normal. Um, you know, it's just, I just saw a video with McCall, and he seems to be going through a lot of personal stuff, um, getting divorced, and losing houses and all this other stuff and living inside of a gym and all that other stuff and for me um, personal stuff really takes a toll on you especially when right before a fight because you are depending on that check so badly to, to take care of all of your personal situations you're afraid your money is going to get taken away by your spouse and all this other stuff so I can see how it could be it can extremely, um, you know, hurt his performance, and I think it will hurt his performance. Um, you know, both of these guys are really known for for their groundwork, and I just believe that with the issues going on with McCall, I think that um, Joseph will take advantage of that, and you know, going in there with a clear mind and 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 use his skill sets to pretty much, I don't know, you know, hold down and and point out McCall. So I have Joseph winning by unanimous decision. That's what I'm going to say. Then we have the um, next fight, which is John Finch versus Damian Maya. Well, you know, Damian Maya is a jiu-jitsu master, or, you know, a, you know, he's just excellent at jiu-jitsu, but he's been really trying to prove the fact that he could stand up and bang with individuals. Then you have John Finch, who is known for his um, lay and pray, and, you know, I wouldn't say his stand-up is, you know, the best, but he could stand up with the best of them, I wish I could say. Um, but we definitely know he can definitely hold an individual down and outpoint them and I believe that's what he's going to do with this I think that even though an individual might say you know you don't want to take Damian Maya down because he's a jiu-jitsu guy and you know he's very good at it excellent at it actually versus John Finch who is a great wrestler but you know, Damian Maya, I mean, um, John Finch has went against guys who are excellent on the ground, quote unquote BJ Penn, um, and other guys who are just excellent at Jiu Jitsu. And, you know, everybody knows the wrestler is, is the Jiu Jitsu guy's kryptonite. And in this situation, when you're getting punched in the face while somebody's on top of you, it's kind of hard to work submissions. Not to say it can't be done, but. Um, in this instance, I don't think that it will be um, a very easy task for uh, Damian Maya to pull out a submission or triangle while getting punched in the face while um, John Finch is in his guard. Because a lot of guys can do damage from the guard, um, even though a lot of you know submission artists, jiu-jitsu guys, will say that's what they work on when they're doing MMA is being just devastating in their guard, being able to pull out submission after submission from the guard because, you know, let's let's be real, when you're going against a wrestler, more than likely that's where he's going to end up in your guard. But 
John Finch is different because he'll be in your guard, plus he has a long reach. So he's going to pound on you from inside the guard, but then he's also going to pass your guard. He's going to continue to move from position to position to position, and he's not going to stay in the same position. He's going to crowd you up against the the cage, and a lot. And, and the funny thing is, is that in in jiu jitsu competitions, there's no cage to block someone from not doing the move. Well, in MMA there is, so it kind of restricts your movement. You can't move your hips. You know, I'm not going to go on and on about this, but. Um, in the end, John Finch will ground, grind out Damian Maya on the ground with ground and pound. And I think, I think, I'm going to say he's going to finish him off because John Finch is just starting to get into this rhythm where he's understanding that he will get a lot more credit if he finishes guys rather than lay and prey on them and, and win by points. He'll get a lot further in the sport, which, you know, is another discussion altogether, but... I, I'm going to say John Finch wins in third round, third round by um, TKO. So then we have Alice Overeem versus uh, Antonio Silva. Well, you know, uh, I, don't, I think the last match that Antonio Silva had was, who did he go against? Uh, he went against, went against Travis Brown. Uh, you know, it's not a Alistair Overeem, but he ended up finishing that guy and um, doing what he needed to do. Then we have Alistair Overeem, who's been suspended because of steroids. So it's kind of a, a pick and miss fight as far as who's going to win or not. We really don't know if it's going to be the same Alistair Overeem because obviously he was stacked on steroids and obviously that helped his performance. So. I mean, I saw a picture of him in the UFC 360 magazine, and he looked smaller um, because he wasn't jacked up on 14 to 1 steroids, so uh, as far as ratio goes. So I don't know if he's going to be the same type of guy. I mean, I guess you can't take the skills away from the guy, but the power and whatnot of his kicks and his punches could be taken away because... He's not on steroids anymore. So, and they did surprise visits on him on this time to make sure he wasn't doing steroids. So, who knows what type of Alistair Overeem. So, I can only go by the past and Antonio Silva's past. And I'm going to choose Alistair Overeem on this one. I think that Alistair Overeem is going to use his space, his spacing, and his, um, I mean, his range, I should say. And just, you know, lay kicks and punches on him all day long, knees, put him up against the cage. And I think he's just going to pound on him. And if he wins this fight, then um, he'll have a very, very good chance at going against um, um, uh, Velasquez. And I would love to see that fight, Alice Overeem and Velasquez. That would be a blockbuster, only because of one guy's physique and, and they have a bunch of highlight reels that I think could really sell well. Even though I do think Velasquez is going to win, he's going to take him down and grind him out and pound him out. And I don't think Alice Overeem can keep up with that pace. Um, and, and we've seen that when he was in strike force because he has a lot of muscle mass on him. But anyway, point is, is Alice Overeem wins this fight um, by TKO in the second round. I think he's going to bloody him up and and, 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 and definitely pound on him. And um, so we have the next fight, which is Rashad Evans versus Norguera. Well, on this fight, guys, I mean, we have one guy who's an excellent wrestler versus another guy who is an excellent jiu-jitsu guy, can come back, it is durable, looks like leather face in the face. You know, it's obvious that he can take punches. Um, he won't give if you, if you submit him. He'd rather you break his arm. Um, you know, I just think that in this one, Rashad Evans is faster, um, stronger, and, um, and Norguera just has heart, a lot of heart, you know, he won't give up, he'll fight you to the last second of the round, you know, even if he knows he's losing, you know, so, and he can take, I mean, just, he can just take punches, punches, and punches, and, um, Rashad Evans, I don't think is going to. I think he's going to try to stand up with Nagara because, you know, Nagara is kind of sloppy. He's like a dirty boxer type of boxer, and Rashad Evans has been really trying to clean up his striking, and um, his striking has been pretty good. 
And I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to stand up with him, try to make it an exciting fight. But if Nogueira gets in too much, then he's going to easily take him down. Pound on him on the ground. Let him get back up. You know, just tire him out. And Nogueira can get tired. He just gets kind of groggy. And then that's when you really turn it on. And I just see Rashad Evans winning this one fairly easy. I think this is just a warm-up match for him as far as, you know, getting back into, you know, light heavyweight um, contention. And, you know, he's just going to easily win this one. I would say, I'm still going to say he's going to do a, it's going to be a unanimous decision because I don't think he's going to finish him off. But I think it's going to be a dominate, dominating uh, performance. He's just going to dominate him for all three rounds. So I have uh, Rashad Evans winning this one by unanimous decision. Then we have um, Aldo versus Edgar. You know, I, I'm glad Frankie made a decision to drop down because I think it was he needed it. It, it, it. You know, he was just taking a lot of punishment dealing with those bigger guys. Now, when he moves down to, to featherweight, he's the bigger guy. Um, you know, are matched up evenly with big with with, with as far as size goes, whereas in, in in lightweight he wasn't. You know, he was a smaller guy. And yes, it's could, a lot can be said for that. I mean, he can always say, "Yeah, I was a, I was a smaller guy, lightweight, and I was still champion. I beat some of the best guys in that division." You know. And, you know, and, and now he can go into featherweight, and it would be nice for him to go to featherweight and actually win a championship. That would, that would say a lot about Frankie Edgar. It really would. But I just don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to get in here with Aldo, who is an amazing striker, um, great jiu-jitsu, as, as we all know, versus Frankie Edgar, who is an excellent, durable, um, has heart, as we all know, um, an excellent wrestler. Um, striking ability is there, you know, it's not as, um, you know, they're not, a, he's not the same level as Aldo, but um, he has still excellent striking that you still need to worry about. And Al, I think the problem in this match is, is that Frankie Edgar gets better as the rounds go further. As, as the, as, you know, once you get into the, once you get into the third, fourth, and fifth round, that's when Frankie Edgar starts kicking it on. He's a slow starter, and once he gets up to next thing you know, he's in the fifth round, and he's looking great. He's just doing all types of, 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 of landing shots and whatnot. But I think he's going to be so damaged before he even gets there. He's going to be on one leg. Aldo's kicks are ferocious. I mean, he's going to tear down the tissue, break bones with those kicks, and I don't think... Frankie Edgar will be able to hold on into those later rounds like he has before. I mean, it is extremely hard to take those kicks and to be able to fight efficiently. And I don't see that happening with Aldo. I mean, with uh, Frankie Edgar. Aldo is just going to tear him apart when it comes to the kicks. And then he's going to finish him off with knees and strikes. And that is my prediction for that fight. And I believe that's going to happen in the third round. Third round, I have Aldo winning. Uh, winning that fight by uh, by, by TKO. I, I just think that the kicks are just going to be brutal, man. I mean, I, I mean, as always, we can always be be wrong, but I just see that that's the way it's going to go. And he's not going to be able to take it anymore as far as the punishment that's going to be coming after the kicks, the knees and body shots and the, you know, and, and the overhand rights and, and punches. It's just not going to happen. And we're going to, you know, see a, a great fight. Man, these fights, I mean, this is a stack card, especially if you love MMA. As normal, guys, please rate, review, um, and, and um, I'm sorry, not rate, review. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Sorry, mixing up my words. And because it, it helps out my channel. And as normal, guys, I'll see you guys in the review of UFC 156. Peace out.